What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dr. Medic channel. Uh, we're just going to do a really quick review here on this really awesome A-Star 350B3 from Colorado's uh, Flight for Life that was uh, that I saw out at the Crash and Learn conference last month. Uh, super cool stuff. Um, stick around. We'll take a look. All right, you might be looking at that and going, that's not Flight for Life, because it's not. That's classic air uh, in a super cool Bell 429. If you want me to do a review video on that, let me know. I've been kind of putting it on the back burner for some reason. Um, but let me know, because I've got a lot of cool footage of that. And Bell 429s are so cool. Uh, but no, we're going to look at the uh, A-Star 350 that's going to uh, fly over us right now. But these guys got bases in Denver, Frisco, Pueblo. Durango, Colorado Springs, their VFR program. I think they've got five helicopters uh, around the Denver metro area, um, actually all across the eastern side of Colorado. Um, their med crew is is uh, hospital based through Centura uh, Health System, and their aviators and their you know their mechanics and their pilots and stuff uh, for their rotor wing are through uh, Air Methods, and they do have a fixed wing operation. Here's just a couple pictures of the uh, other super awesome King Air 200s. I think there's another picture. Well, that's their ambulance. They are also um, uh, a ground transport service as well. They've got a couple of those doing just critical care ground transfers. Super awesome system. Um, and there's, there's another picture. Oh, my God, look how beautiful that is. Anyway, back to the video. So this was just an open field out, outside at the conference. Uh, super beautiful stuff. You know, like I said, these guys got five, five or six helicopters. I think they got five helicopters, a couple King Air 200s that they run out of Centennial Airport. And the uh, King Air 200s are actually uh, operated by Mayo Aviation. And the rotor wings, like I said, are operated by uh, Air Methods uh, Corporation. They utilize both uh, flight paramedics and flight nurses. Uh, they also have EMTs, which is super cool, that drive those uh, ambulances that I just showed you. And they also um, uh, participate in all kinds of other logistical uh, stuff and getting patients ready for transfer and transport and stuff like that. So that's a great opportunity for EMTs uh, in that area. Uh, they've got pretty high expectations when it comes to uh, their med crew. Uh, you got to have five years experience as a nurse and, and, and three as a paramedic. Uh, some places are a lot lower than that, where you just need three as a nurse and maybe two as a paramedic. They also require up to 3,000 hours for their pilots, which is, you know, 500 or 1,000 more than a lot of other agencies. So that's pretty cool. All right, so real quick, we can, we're going we're gonna to start on the uh, left side of the aircraft and uh, kind of work our way around. But just looking on the outside, um, you can see it's got the wire strike system on that last video uh, I, on the Bell 407. I asked you guys about the uh, wire strike system, and you guys did did send me that one video, that 145, uh, where where the wire strike system actually did come into play uh, and, you know, had a, had a good outcome. So that's good. So this definitely has the, has the wire strike system on it. This right here, in case you've never seen one of these, uh, that's called a yaw string. I, I think it's pretty cheap on most helicopters, but it's just, it's, it's there to uh, show the pilot, it, you know, just an external uh, indicator of, of possible yaw. They even had this on some pretty bad aircraft like the F-14 and some other ones, but uh, I swear to God, I think I heard someone tell me once that from from Aerospatial and Eurocopter and now Airbus that that string right there is five hundred dollars. It's like five or six inches long, and it's five hundred dollars. Anyway, uh, beautiful beautiful looking aircraft. You can see it's got the sliding doors in the back, uh, and this is a B three model, which you know simply means that it's got the uh, um, it's got FADEC, but it also has the most updated aerial two D engine, uh, which you can kind of see right here, which is in both the um, the latest models of A Star 350, B3, H125s, and, and EC and H130s. This thing absolutely rips. Got almost 900 horsepower. Super cool. Look at that picture. That's cool. Anyway, and so this crew was super cool. As as you can already see, just sitting here on the side, this is a tight fitting aircraft. And again, just kind of like that Bell 407. This thing is a hot rod. It's an absolute hot rod, but it is a tight fit. You're not doing a whole lot of good physical assessment in an aircraft like this. Um, you, you know, try to do those things on the ground uh, before you get them into aircraft. But uh, 
Uh, I'm not saying it can't be done. I've flown in this aircraft. I've flown patients in this aircraft, and, and, it, and it certainly can be done, but it is very difficult to manage the airway of a patient uh, or uh, do any kind of lower uh, lower assessment, lower half assessment, uh, especially on like a trauma patient or something like that. But it works. It's common. And for where they are up in the mountains, this thing absolutely rips. You can see their CAMES accredited. They've been CAMES accredited since 1993, which is uh, an awful long time, which is super, super cool. Uh, as you're kind of getting into the in, into the med crew compartment here, you can see they've got two seats. They've got a seat over on the right and a seat here on the left. They they probably can put a third seat in this, but it just makes absolutely tight fit. There's really no rearward facing seats in in this aircraft like there was in like a Bell 407. Two is really all you need. Uh, you can see they've got a lot of extra uh, little little pockets and compartments on the side where they label stuff. I love that they label stuff, and I love that. I hope these are checklists. I'm a big fan of checklists. I hope those are like little quick reference sheets for maybe protocols or drug dosages or something like that. Uh, these are those uh, Sapphire IV pumps. I have zero experience with those. Let me know what you think of those, if those are any good. Um, they've got to be a long way from the ones that I used to use. Uh, standard suction unit. Uh, I got some some power back here and some O2 interfaces with, uh, with the onboard uh, oxygen system. Looks like they've got... Super badass Hamilton vent. And I think they got a Zoll cardiac monitor, which is right there. And um, those are some stylish shades right there. Those are pretty cool. Sharps container over there. And probably an airway trauma bag sitting here. You can see, I mean, if you're a pilot and you're sitting right here, I mean, you're looking over and you're getting, you're getting real comfortable with this patient because they are right next to you. And you can see kind of the importance of uh, making sure your patient is secured and uh, is not combative uh, and stuff like that in an aircraft like this because you're the pilot is is absolutely right there. Cool picture of the rotor head. I love mechanics. It's so cool looking at that. Sliding doors uh, makes things a little bit easier. It's the heat shield in the back, and you can see the back of that 2D engine uh, with that giant titanium exhaust, which is absolute work of art. So pretty. Uh, and then you come back here and you're like, well, where's the tail rotor? Well, this is a Eurocopter and, uh, or Airbus or Aerospatial, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's French. And the French built their aircraft to have their uh, rotor blades uh, spinning in a clockwise direction, uh, which uh, typically if, you, if you're using a pusher uh, tail rotor, which most helicopters do, not all but most do, uh, means you got to put the tail rotor on the right side of the aircraft. But yes, uh, uh, a lot of people say, well, the Europeans, um, their rotors um, all go opposite from the United States. And that's not really true. It's really just the French and the Russians. Um, everybody else kind of goes counterclockwise with the Americans. I think Italy, the UK, but those French, I don't know, they go the other way. It's just what they want to do. Cool shot of the tail rotor. Look at these rock stars over there. I think it was Jenny from IA Med. Hi, Jenny. Anyway, uh, love looking at the tail rotor. I'm going to pause right here. So if you watched that last video, it uh, came out a couple weeks ago um, about a heart transplant and a, um, an Augusta 109 and a tail rotor issue uh, down at USC in Southern California. You can kind of tie this picture to that. Um, this is just the way that Eurocopter and, and Aerospatial back in the day designed their uh tail rotor bearing to have this locking system on here with these bolts so that these bolts don't back out uh, or so that this cover plate doesn't back out and then, you know, have a bearing failure and the tail rotor come off. Uh, you can see that our safety wired. This thing's, this thing's not coming off at all. Clank. I think I hit the tail rotor with my head. Uh, but just look at the mechanics of that. It's so cool. Beautiful orange. Uh, livery. I think this particular aircraft was actually built in 2018. It's not that old. All of their tail rotor tail tail numbers have uh, lifeguard, uh, which that's kind of cool. Uh, they got more compartments here uh, where they can store uh, blankets. These guys do carry blood, so they probably put their blood back there when they're not with a patient. Uh, uh, or something like that. Um, this is just a step and your serial numbers and uh, data manufacturer and stuff would be right there. Again, these sliding glass doors are, or, or sliding doors uh, are also pretty good, especially when it's super windy out and you don't have to worry about making a mistake and letting go of the door or something and then the wind 
blows the door off. Lots more uh, storage compartments on the back of the pilot seats here, uh, and then to the right of this 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 right here, uh, Rocky. What does it say? Rocky Rex. That's Rocky Rex. That's a good picture. I don't know whose water bottle that is. But carabiners all over the place. That's pretty normal. I love that they have an atlas and a map back here, probably in case they get uh, post-crash survival stuff, which would be uh, super cool. Again, beautiful. Just beautiful aircraft. So clean. So organized. Didn't really... I didn't want to open up the door because the pilot was standing there. I didn't want to bug him too much. But uh, you can see how updated this is with uh, the most up-to-date Garmin stuff. Beautiful helicopter. Anyway, it was super cool uh, for these folks to let me take a picture, a video of their helicopter. Uh, super, super excited to uh, see them there. They, they donated their time to come out, uh, but this helicopter absolutely rips. Um, this is a really, really safe organization. Um, you can't really talk about Flight for Life without talking about the crash that they had um, back in uh, 2015 uh, there in Colorado. Uh, I'm not going to play the video right here because it's not really relevant to this situation, but uh, it's a very, very important crash um, because it is one of one of two crashes. This one, uh, the Flight for Life crash that happened in Colorado, as well as the Arch Air medical crash uh, that happened in St. Louis that really were the catalyst for the NTSB to be recommending uh, the crash-resistant fuel tanks. Uh, so that was the their service, uh, Flight for Life service the, that was... Uh, probably the first aircraft that really uh, made that happen. And it was probably because it was on video. And I hate to say that, uh, but if it wasn't caught on video, it, it, it's sometimes it's not so obvious what the problem is. There were tons of uh, EC-130s and uh, A-Star 350s that, that crashed and erupted into flames where everybody died, which possibly could have been an otherwise survivable event, but they weren't caught on video. Uh, and this one was actually caught on video. Uh, we will talk about that in another video. I'm going to have a story on it. But because it was caught on video, you can see how it didn't crash that hard. I mean, it did crash with some force, uh, but it didn't crash that hard, uh, and it still erupted in flames. And unfortunately, the pilot lost his life, and the two med crew in the back were, were seriously injured. Uh, but other than that accident, uh, over the lifetime of this uh, service, they, they've been an extremely safe service, great people, and uh, hear nothing but uh, good things about them, and I appreciate them. Uh, giving me the time and letting me to walk around their aircraft. Oh, and as I start walking out of the aircraft, I realize that uh, this is probably where their blood is right here. Um, I can't really read that. What does that say? My eyes aren't. I can't see a thing without my glasses, but uh, that's probably their blood cooler. thing to keep a beer cold for like a month in there. Super cool. And there's that cool Bell 429 in the background. Uh, hopefully we'll have a story coming up on that one soon. Here they are about to leave, and uh, we'll just sit back and watch this uh, beautiful aircraft take off and leave. Off they go. And as seems to be the tradition uh, at Crash and Learn, uh, they turned around and gave us a surprise uh, high-speed flyover on their way out to buzz the tower. I'll work on my autofocus skills here. That's all I got for you on this episode. I appreciate you all watching. I hope you liked it. Uh, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, visit the website for some nerdy merch. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode.